At night, in the dark, were the only times I couldn't get it to go away. The screams, the smirk on Cole Saxon's face, the sound of my mother's first cough when I didn't understand yet, and the second one when I did. Her bloodied face, people falling all around me, choking on their own blood because of mine. In waking hours, like now, my brain took those same memories and did something different with them. The guy I was watching across the party was short, with dark hair, wearing a tuxedo. I could only see his back as he meandered from the bar to the edge of the property, gazing out over the twinkling lights of Jerusalem. Kuklochka, Stellan said in my ear. I squinted. Now that he was closer, I could tell the guy's hair was curlier than I'd thought, longer. He finally turned around, taking a sip of his champagne. It wasn't Cole Saxon. None of them ever were. I should be glad. If the Saxons actually showed up here, it would mean nothing good. I turned to Stellan. What? He rested a hand possessively on my lower back and leaned in close. I asked if you wanted to go skinny dipping in the fountain, liven up this party a little. I stared at him blankly. He sighed. I asked if you'd happened to see the Rajesh family come in while I was talking to Elodie. I should have smiled at the joke. That's what he was trying to do, loosen me up, make me look like a girl in a cocktail dress at a party should. But my brain no longer remembered how to create that feeling on its own, so I rearranged my features in a way that I hoped from the outside looked more pleasant and less robotic than it felt. No, I don't think they're here yet. Maybe we should start with someone else. He didn't even attempt a fake smile back. A firework burst, loud enough to shake the ground. Nearby, next to the very fountain Stellan had been trying to joke about, Jack and Elodie both glanced up at the sky. Elodie leaned in to whisper to Jack, and she winced almost imperceptibly. She'd been shot and was still healing, which meant she was still at half capacity. She hated it. But she was here tonight, for us, just like she was every day. For the past month, she and Jack had been with Stellan and me as friends. Tonight, they were here as our keepers. This party was a celebration, and we were the guests of honor. Tomorrow, we were to be initiated as the thirteenth family of the Circle of Twelve. It had been almost a month since my mother had died, since Cole Saxon had released the virus in a crowded room at a Fashion Week show in Paris, and my world— and the whole world, had been turned upside down. That night, we told the rest of the circle exactly what the Saxons had done. We told them about how my half-siblings, Lydia and Cole, with the blessing of our father, Alistair, had been murdering circle members all over the globe and blaming it on the circle's longtime enemies, the Order, trying to scare the circle into uniting behind them. We told them how the Saxons now had a biological weapon to make any attacks even easier. What we didn't tell them was that the biological weapon was made of our blood. Stellan and I were the one and the girl with the violet eyes. The couple foretold in the mandate, a prophecy of sorts that the circle had believed in for thousands of years. But we'd recently discovered that the union we were to create, which the circle believed would give them great power— actually meant that if Stellan's blood and mine got mixed and an unsuspecting circle member ingested it, they would begin to bleed uncontrollably and die within minutes. Another round of fireworks lit up a bridge in the distance. Closer, the walls of the old quarter of Jerusalem were cast in various shades of purple. I could pick out one that looked just like my eyes— I wondered what kind of celebration the Meleks had made up to explain the display. At first, all the on-the-nose, over-the-top circle business had been dazzling. Living in the Louvre, a ball inside the Eiffel Tower, fireworks over the city for a private party. Now I saw how it was a smokescreen. The fanfare served to remind them how important they were. And now we were at the center of it all. I'd spent the last month hoping it wouldn't come to this, 